The Lenovo IdeaPad 3i's design is simple and doesn't stand out in any way. It has a plastic chassis, relatively thin bezels around the display, a full-size keyboard with a numpad on the right, and ports on both sides. The speaker grills are at the top of the keyboard deck, and the air vents are on the bottom. This laptop is available in three colors, Abyss Blue, Arctic Gray, and Frost Blue. However, availability varies depending on the region. The Lenovo IdeaPad 3i's build quality is good. It's entirely plastic but feels sturdy. It just doesn't feel as premium as higher-end devices. There's some flex in the display and keyboard deck, but almost none on the lid when the laptop is closed. The finish doesn't pick up fingerprints or scratch easily, and the feet feel solid and stick firmly to the bottom. The hinge is okay. It doesn't feel particularly smooth but is very stable, so there's almost no screen wobble when typing. Unfortunately, you can't open the laptop with one hand because the base of the laptop is too light and lifts with the lid. The Lenovo IdeaPad 3i and its power adapter are compact and lightweight. The Lenovo IdeaPad 3i serviceability is decent. Accessing the internals is straightforward. You only need to remove tin Phillips screws and undo the clips holding the bottom panel. Unfortunately, the memory isn't user-replaceable, and there's only one storage drive slot. A 1080p resolution looks decently sharp on a 15.6-inch screen. 16 to 9 is a standard aspect ratio that's well-suited for media consumption since most videos are in the same format. However, a 16 to 10 or 3 to 2 aspect ratio would have been better for productivity. As the increased vertical space lets you see more text when reading a document or website, so you don't have to scroll as much. For the best viewing experience, it's best to get a model with an IPS panel because TN panels have worse viewing angles and color reproduction. All available displays have a 60 Hz refresh rate, which is typical for productivity laptops. The IPS touchscreen panel has a slow response time causing noticeable ghosting, so it isn't ideal for viewing fast-moving content or gaming. The non-touch IPS and TN panels will perform similarly. The contrast ratio is decent for an IPS panel but is still relatively low compared to other display technologies like VA and OLED. This contrast level makes blacks look gray in dim settings. The non-touch IPS panel will perform similarly, as it has the same advertised contrast. However, the TN panel will likely be worse, with an advertised contrast of 600:1. The touchscreen IPS display gets reasonably bright. It's enough for use in most indoor settings, but not outdoors in broad daylight. It gets very dim at the lowest brightness setting, which is great for darkroom viewing as it causes less eye strain. The non-touch IPS panel will perform similarly. The TN panel is slightly dimmer, with an advertised brightness of 250 candelas per square meter. The reflection handling is excellent. The matte coating does a great job of diffusing and reducing the intensity of bright reflections. You can still see reflections when viewing light color content with the screen at full brightness, but they aren't distracting.